American intelligence services are accused of spying on the papal conclave as they deliberated over who to choose as the new pope. It's the latest allegation against the US National Security Agency following reports that they eavesdropped liberally on European leaders and now a visiting European delegation has been to the White House to complain. From Washington, Inigo Gilmore reports. Thomas Jefferson, one of America's founding fathers, often warned about the tyranny of an overpowerful government. Many come to his memorial to pay homage to the man whose cherished values of freedom and equality are instilled in generations of Americans. So are America's powerful intelligence chiefs now protecting or undermining those freedoms? It's a question which hung over proceedings across town on Capitol Hill. I am a little concerned that we've decided that we're going to name our intelligence services as the bad guys. Sympathetic questioning by the Republican head of the House Intelligence Committee opened the way for a vigorous defense of spying on world leaders. I always found that the best way to determine a foreign leader's intentions uh, is to somehow either get close to a foreign leader or actually get communications of a foreign leader. Is, would that be accurate? Yes, it would. It's uh, invaluable to us to know um, where countries are coming from, what their policies are, uh, how that would impact us across a whole range uh, of, of issues. The head of the National Security Agency claimed that phone records of millions of Europeans had been handed over to them by Allied spy services. To be perfectly clear, this is not information that we collected on European citizens. It represents information that we and our NATO allies have collected in defense of our countries and in support of military operations. We want to get rid of espionage between friends, not symbolic really get rid of it. The NSA's claims of partial collaboration have done nothing to placate a visiting European parliamentary delegation. But it became clear that the damage, the image damage for the United States is so high that something has to be done on that. And I hope that it will be successful because we need messages to our people that without any purpose it cannot be espionage on Merkel or on citizens. It's not just leaders, it's citizens too. But the delegation returns home with little reassurance that the Americans really intend to end their friend-on-friend -friend spying. You can't help but wonder what Thomas Jefferson would have made of all this. These days, when it comes to balancing freedom and security, Americans appear to be torn. Who wants to be spied on for no reason? Come on, who wants somebody to be spying on for no reason? I expect our country to have all diligence and efforts to keep our country secure. And as we know, you at the home with a, a James Bond, um, spying is a way of our life and our world and it has been for a long time. As the veil is lifted on America's intrusive mass surveillance, both home and abroad, a debate intensifies here over whether historic freedoms are being protected or eroded. Indigo Gilmore, Channel 4 News, Washington. Well, I've been speaking to the German MEP, Elmer Brock, who we saw in that report, and I asked him whether he was now feeling reassured. No, I do not feel reassured. I've got the feeling that I've understood now more, but there's a lot of questions still to be solved, especially that uh, all the espionage between friends has to be stopped and the NSA activities in Europe, which have nothing to do with our agreed cooperation to fighting terrorism and cyber crime, and I think uh, these anti-espionage agreements have to be settled, as the European Council has said. Are you really surprised? Because nobody else is. I think I was surprised about the dimension. There is no proportionality anymore, and to spy on a, a leader of a friendly country, an allied country, I think it's an incredible case. Could you imagine if the Germans would spy on Downing Street 10 or on the White House? You mean they don't? What happened in such countries? They don't. Why I'm not? I'm sure that they don't. Because it's wrong. You do not do such things to friends. But do you really believe that allies don't spy on each other? I mean, do you, do you really think the Americans don't look at anything to do with Britain or that Britain doesn't look at anything to do with Germany? I mean, is that not perhaps a little naive? Uh, if it's naive, uh, then I think we have to make this naivety to a real policy. The confidence is destroyed uh, in this moment uh, between several European countries and the United States, and that is a very dangerous question. 
if uh, mistrust creeps in the hearts of people, uh, then I think fr uh, friendship is going uh, very far. Uh, it can, might be destroyed. What's become clear is that Britain's GCHQ has been very involved in cooperating with the Americans. Do you have questions for Britain as well? Look, uh, the German BND is also cooperating with the Americans, but if the British service does the same as the NSA does in Germany, then I think we have also a problem, and then we have to ask our British friends uh, questions, and I hope that is not the case. Have you seen the, the latest story today about alleged NSA spying uh, to do with intercepting Google and Yahoo data centers? If uh, the American services really have gone illegally into the servers of American companies which have American uh, European data on board, then I think that is an incredible act and would be seen at British or German or European law as illegal and as a criminal offence. Do you trust the US right now? Uh, the, uh, the US was always a cradle of freedom for me, for individual rights, and I hope that confidence can be established again. Alma Brock, thank you very much.